Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 17 of Be Well Together. I'm Jeffrey Huang, Senior Manager of Employee Engagement and Events, and I'll be your host today as both Jody and Catherine are each prioritizing their well being and taking some much needed PTO. And they left me a note to tell you all to do the same. Yes, you. Uh, anyway, I'm super excited for today's guest and topic. Like many of you, I've spent a lot of time cooking and baking at home during the quarantine. Uh, but unless you got on the Peloton bandwagon, you might also be exercising less. Well, today we're in luck because uh, Bill Corbett, executive chef and head culinary at Salesforce, is joining us once again, this time to show us a delicious blueberry muffin recipe with a healthy, unexpected addition. Spinach. Spinach is one of my favorite greens because it's so versatile. It's great in a salad, but you can put it in just about anything from smoothies to an egg scramble to pasta dishes. It's a staple in my fridge. Uh, and I'm told that Chef Bill's spinach and blueberry muffins are called green goblins because they've got greens and they're so good, you'll be gobbling them down. For those of you who don't know Chef Bill Corbett, he's a renowned pastry chef and was recognized as the best pastry chef 2011 from San Francisco Magazine. And in 2013, he was selected as one of the top 10 pastry chefs in America by, by Dessert Professional Magazine. Prior to Salesforce, Chef Bill spent time at, Ma at Manhattan's WD-50, San Francisco's Michael Minna, two Michelin star Qua, and the Absinthe Group, among other leading restaurants. So if you weren't hungry before, I hope you are now, because we are going to get baking. And in case you missed it, the ingredients were posted in the Can't Be Well Chatter group. So please feel free to refer to those during this session. Um, also, we'll be taking a few questions throughout. So if you have those questions, you can feel free to post those in the chatter group as well. And lastly, before I turn it over to Chef Bill, I want to give a quick shout out to all the Salesforce kids tuning in this week as part of Salesforce Adventurers Club, our virtual bring your kids to work experience that's taking place right now this week. So kids, if you're dialed in, put on your aprons and let's get baking. Chef Bill, welcome back to Be Well Together. Action lights, cameras. Okay. Thanks, you thanks back. for having me. We're glad to be back. We've got Charlie back with us again from the first time. Well, you ready? So, when we put in this before we start, I want to say something. We all got to keep them separated books. So, I mean, what? So, I like my spinach muffins plain with no blueberry. <laughs> that's how I look. That's how okay. I kind of like. Yeah, okay. Should we get to making them? Should we get to talking about the, the muffins? Mm -hmm. Come on up. So yeah, so we're going to make some, some, I make this for Charlie a lot. We make these spinach muffins. He loves them. They're totally green, but when you eat them, you don't notice, like, it doesn't taste like a bunch of spinach in your muffin. Charlie, come on back up here. Come on. We're not, come on. Um, so yeah, we, uh, they're, they're totally green and you know this is actually the blueberries are a new addition we wanted to add so we're, we're adding this and he's he's saying he doesn't want it but i think he'll like it once he has it you want to make some muffins okay should we talk about the ingredients we have i um i think i'm going to let it deal with my spinach muffins wait okay you're no. right yeah okay well let's focus on what we're talking about right now sure. okay so what are we going to do here what do we got we got some flour. Flour. I mean, you. Got my setup here yeah. too. Okay. okay. We've got some flour, some blueberries, obviously, uh, some cinnamon, baking powder, and baking soda in here. Uh, we've got obviously a lot of spinach. Calls for six ounces of spinach. One of the easiest ways to get that is you can buy a clamshell often in six ounce packages. Um, or you can buy it in bulk and it's way cheaper probably. So uh, we've got milk and honey. I kind of, I put them in the same container. I put the milk in first and then I measured in the honey and then it's easier to get it out. Um, that's such a smart trick. Cause it's always tough. Yeah, to I'll give you the trick. Yeah, yeah. The other trick to getting honey out is to spray it with a little cooking spray, your container before you measure your honey in. And then it just slides right out. Uh, we've got one egg. We've got a banana and some melted butter. Uh, very important about bananas. Uh, a lot of people, when they, when they look yeah. for bananas, they look for kind of very yellow bananas. When like spotted bananas like this, they kind of get, they hold it up to the camera. Yeah. 
The spotted bananas are a little sweeter. I know I like to eat bananas. You do like to eat bananas. So the spotted bananas are a little, uh, they get sweeter as they get more, uh, as they get darker, basically, they get more color on them. Uh, you could even, like, if you literally have, like, black bananas, you could use those for this as well. They're going to be fine in the recipe, um, like what you would use for banana bread. Uh, but it's really not so much about the banana, so you can really use uh, anything. But I try to avoid ones that have green on them. Um, Charlie's sneaking blueberries. Um, so what we're going to start with, we're going to weigh our, uh, I like to blend all our, but it's going to be really simple. It's a super simple recipe. Um, we blend all the wet ingredients, including the spinach, together. Wait, I like wet to do ingredients? It. All the wet ingredients we just went over. Wedding? Wet, not wedding ingredients. I got a wedding. Yeah, I didn't say wedding. Okay, so we're going to sift our flour and our dries together. I threw the salt in the bottom of the bowl. The salt often doesn't sift well through strainers. Um, it always gets left behind, and then you just basically got to dump it in anyway. So I throw the sift, I threw the salt in the bottom. We've got our holy flour. You want to hand me that you want to put the the sandwich? Stop sitting on the blueberries. There won't be in the muffins. Okay. Do you want to dump in your baking powder, baking soda, and cinnamon right in there? Good job. Tap it so we get the rest out. All right. See, I'm helping. You are helping. You're always a good helper. Um, okay. Now we got to sift this. I'm using two just because mine are a little like my 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 sieve here is, and the strainer is a little wide, the hole. So I'm using two to sort of double sift it at one at one time. One trick too is to measure right into your your whatever you're sifting through. If you measure right into that, then you can you know you cut the step of measuring into something, then putting it in the sifter and sifting it. Um, and you've got you've got one of the pro sifters. Those work great. You can also just use uh, literally a, a mesh strainer as well if you want. All right, so we've got that. That's our dry ingredients. Let's set this over here for a second. Now we're gonna put things in the blender. All right, so let's start with the banana. You wanna feel the banana for me? Yep. Yeah. I wanna put some television on my, I see this. In. Oh, really? Some television. Okay, we're gonna put the egg in the blender. Let's do that first. Okay. It doesn't matter what order it goes in, just put in the spinach last. Okay. And why are we putting in the spinach last? You want to work it then? There you go. Okay. Where do you go? Oh, oh he's going to grab something. So, oh, also preheat your oven to 350 now. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a banana in there. Okay, so we're putting the egg, the banana, all of the banana, right? Like the honey, the milk, the banana. Yeah. So the only thing you don't put in is the butter, the melted butter. Okay. That goes mixed in at the end, just because uh, if the butter's a little too warm, you could kind of curdle the egg. Oh, you got your blender? Oh, you're getting to work here. All right. You're gonna you're gonna blend your own stuff. Okay. Charlie has has other plans. Okay. All right. So we've got all that in there. I'm just gonna switch spots with your blender, Charlie. Okay. I'm gonna bring this one over here. Thank you. You're welcome. I got my. And then. I got my blender. <laughs> you probably won't be able to fit all the spinach in at once. So just uh, put a bunch of it in. Start the blender just to kind of blend it down a little. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to just get some of the, the spinach blended down, and then you can add the rest. You'll be able to add it all at, all at the end there. Okay. You ready? You ready, Charlie? Yeah. You need, you need earplugs? Okay, let's do it loud for, for one quick second. Well, <laughs> all right. Here we go. The first set of spinach down and in there. And now I'm going to put in the rest of the spinach, and then I'll and then I'll blend it more thoroughly. We don't want to blend it too long. I'm going to put the myself on blend this. Blend. The longer you blend this, and the more aggressively blenders actually heat things up quite a bit, um, just from the friction. 
and you will end up with kind of a, a dark, or you, it'll turn it brown pretty quickly. So, so if you just, yeah, there you go. Uh, Uh, decently blended. There's still like little yeah. green okay. chunks. It's but. okay if there's bits of spinach in there. In the end, you won't okay. even see them. Um, and in the end, it's you know it doesn't really it doesn't make too much of a difference. Yeah. I'll let you through in one second. Okay. Okay, Charlie, we're gonna mix here. Come here. Ooh. Come help me mix this. Okay, then I can eat my spinach. From the demo? You'll be able to try one from the demo, yeah. Okay, here's the whisk. Here, you want to start whisking? Yep. So do this in about three stages. Um, you don't want to overmix too much. Here, you want to see that? Here, you do it. Yeah, good job. All right. If you overmix, it'll make the muffins tough, but let's get a little more in. And then when it's almost in, then we'll add the butter. Okay, ready? Mix it. Mix it, Mickey. Yeah, you're doing great. All right. Mix it with the flour. Okay, we got a little bit here. And that's what's from. You get to put flour yeah, on the table when you're making Christmas cookies. You're right. And that's really fun to put flour on the table. It is. Okay, so now we're going to scrape in this butter. This is melted, but it's not hot. You don't want it too hot or it'll start to kind of set off all the baking powder and baking soda as well as it could, could kind of curdle some egg. So if you can melt it and just have it liquid is best. Okay. If you're um, melting the butter in the microwave like I usually do, you could probably just do it a little in advance and then let it cool a little bit. Yeah. Totally, yeah, you could do it in like 10 second bursts, yeah. and then you'll be, it'll be, it'll be pretty Jeffrey? good. Yes. What's your name again? His name's Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, you might not want to put butter in microwave anything. You might not want to put anything in microwave, but microwaves aren't really good for putting stuff What are you talking about? Charlie doesn't have a microwave, so he doesn't understand what you can do. I have a toy one. You do have a toy one, you're right. <laughs> your kitchen. But if you're like me, you're too lazy to melt butter over a stovetop and you want to do it in 30 seconds in a microwave. Exactly. Okay, you want to put the blueberries in, Charlie? So now we mix it. It's almost mixed. I can see a little bit of butter. You might not be able to see that on the camera. This one's, okay, throw it all in. We can put them all in at once. If you want. Ooh. I'll just dump it. We just want to add them a few at a time. Don't want to lose them. Okay, let me pull your sleeves up too so you don't get muffins. Blueberries. Yeah, you can go ahead here. No, I'm okay. No, You're okay? It. All right, so while Charlie puts all the blueberries very slowly into the batter, mm -hmm. we got to get them in a little bit because we got to mix it. No, okay. no, I'll you want to do it? Okay, go for it. Dump them. Charlie has his own methods here, so. Yep, and now we... This will kill time. We'll have a... <laughs> now I'll leave one for myself. All right, you'll leave one for yourself. Trying to be sneaky. You better get one before I mix it in. All right. So then I'm just trying to gently fold, not kind of beat the batter up too much. Again, the more you beat it up, the more you know it's going to be tough and less tender. And you might get a little good. Okay. What's his name again? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, you might be tiny bit. You might be wrapped on spinach. You might be the rounds Covered, might be like just green rounds and 
taken out too. That looks great. I, How's that look? That looks great. Good. All so right. You get muffin tin, and then uh, I pre-sprayed mine with a little cooking spray. And Charlie already knows what the next step is. So, um, you can do it. Here, turn it over. Yeah, Phil, what's your take on um, cooking spray versus uh, like the little paper muffin things? You know, I just feel like it's like, if you get decent uh, cooking tins that it's not gonna stick so much, then you can, uh, then, then you can avoid just having that extra paper in the waste, I think, you know, for me. Good point. I, I found, found really a need for it with uh, if you have, if you have tins that'll, uh, the muffin tins that'll kind of release easily. There you go. Good job. All right. So and then, and then we like to use an ice cream scoop, like one of these disher scoops. Um, you don't have to have it. Have you can do, taste? you know, you can have a little taste. Maybe a measuring cup. Yeah, that'll work. Anything you can pour out of. Um, some people like to use even like in our kitchen. Sometimes you'll see people with pitchers pouring it or yeah. pastry bags. The thing I like about the disher scoop is that you can get a kind of consistent amount in each one, and then don't lick that. Don't lick the, don't lick the scoop. Here, no, no, don't lick the scoop. Come on. Um, you want to keep scooping? Yep. I can see the blueberry peeking out. But yeah, the disher scoops just give more consistency. Um, and those are also your best friend when you're making cookies, and you want to scoop the batter and maybe freeze it. Yeah. You'll get consistent. Yeah, because I like my dad's poodle cake. Yeah, you made me a poodle cake. They made me a poodle cake for my birthday. We have an inside joke in the family about no poodles in the kitchen. <laughs> so they made me a poodle cake, and the poodle was in the kitchen. Charlie thought it was the most hilarious thing he's ever seen. Wait, Dad, more than poodle, I think I didn't see the dance. <laughs> oh, Charlie, it's um, okay, because he... It's easier to reach. Good job, Charlie. I'm working out by myself. You are. You're doing great. <laughs> That's okay. So, Bill, where did the inspiration to add spinach into blueberry muffins? Um. Come? So when we, Charlie's our first son. We have a we have another baby who's about seven months old now. But, um. Carrie, my wife, was just looking for sort of healthy rep recipes on the internet and, and came across one that used spinach. So I just kind of played with it. And it came out great. And you know, Carrie likes them, Charlie likes them. They're good muffins. And then we usually make, we'll make this tray and then everything, any leftover batter, we make in a mini muffin tray and then we just freeze all the excess and we kind of pull them out a few at a time. So great, you know, you don't have to eat 12 muffins within two days kind of thing, you know. Yeah, and, and if you bake, if you figure out how many you want to keep, you want me to do it? If you figure out how many you want to kind of have on hand, you know, keep those up. You all finish that one? Okay, finish that one. Okay. So yeah, and then, uh, you know, we just leave out, you know, three or four. And you finish that one too? Okay, yeah. you just tell me what I need to do, pal. Finish this one. Okay, now where do you want me to go? Over up here. Up there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right by that dot. Right by the dot. Okay. So yeah, so we, we usually keep out like four or five and then we'll freeze the rest two, and pull them out three, four, over the next week or two. Four more to go. And they'll last a couple weeks in the freezer really well. If you let them go too long, they kind of get like dried out a little bit. Yeah. What's the best way to like reheat the frozen yeah. muffins? You just let them thaw on the countertop? Or I would just, like you know, pull them out um, and throw them in kind of another container. Um, and then, so let them thaw in the container, and uh, and then when you go to reheat them, just, I usually just throw them in like the toaster oven for a few minutes, okay. and then get them warm again, and then you know then they're they're pretty nice and soft. Hey Charlie, what are you doing over there? You can yeah, we'll, we're gonna bring those up in one minute. Yeah, I want to eat this finished muffins that we made in this. Demo. What will eat these? Don't worry. These are all for you, pal. We got like we have a lot of spinach muffins now. So yeah. we can make two batches. 
Okay. Now one batch. So there's our first batch, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll set up, we'll set our batter aside. So and then I just gently shake it down, usually give it a little tap to kind of knock out any air bubbles that might be in there. Um, and then we're gonna bake these at 350. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down. And then uh, we're gonna, wait, wait, we're trying to talk. We gotta talk. Um, we're gonna bake these at 350, probably for about 15 or so minutes. I usually start checking them after eight or nine just to be safe. Uh, they almost are never, they'll never be done, but just to be safe. Um, and then uh, I'll check them again. I check them around eight or nine minutes, and I'll check them every four minutes after that until they're done. If you've got a cake tester or a paring knife, you can just slide it in, and if it comes out clean, obviously there might be blueberry on it, but if none of the raw batter is coming back out on it, then they should be done. And then uh, we'll pop them out. Um, we pre-baked some mini ones this morning. Once they come out, they, they, they look like, you know, they look like that. Wow, yum. And then when you cut them open, well, Charlie's just going to eat one right away. You can go ahead. I want to eat the other one. Well, we're going to, we have to bake those, so it's going to be about 20 minutes before you can eat those. So you can have one, of, yeah, you can have that one. So yeah, and that's it. It's yeah, pretty. Yeah. The other one, another one from the nails after I eat it. Oh, really? You're just going to eat a lot of muffins today? Uh -huh. Is that your big plan? Yeah. I see. All muffins. How is it? That's what it looks like inside. You want to hold it up to the yeah. camera so you can see what it looks yeah. like on the inside? It doesn't look like all... It doesn't really look like all blueberries. It just looks like all spinach muffins. It just looks like all spinach muffins inside. Yeah. So what do you think is, now that we put blueberries in it, do you say yes or no? Keep the blueberries or get rid of the blueberries? Yes. Keep them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's so Charlie's a Charlie's a convert now. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's that's really it. Super simple. They're really moist because of all the banana, uh, the honey, and then the spinach actually provides a ton of moisture because there's so much water content in spinach. So so yeah, so th that's those are it. Blueberry spinach muffins. We'll call them green goblin muffins. Charlie disagreed with the name as well. He had so he had a lot of editing to do with. He didn't. He didn't. He thought it was too spooky. You like the name now, Green Goblin muffins? Yeah. You do. So that's all right. We'll yeah. say, you want them we'll over? Now, keep the name. No, 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 don't talk yet. Okay. Yeah. So we'll keep them. We'll keep the name because we have my Halloween decoration. Oh yes, Charlie wanted to make Halloween decorations this week, so so we made some. Yep. Well, Ooh, my dad's got nothing in them. Yeah. Then. So yours will come out probably about 15, 20 minutes, Jeffrey. Yeah, okay. I'm just setting my timer on my watch right now. Great. Cool. Does he speak French? I don't know if he speaks French or not. Do you speak French? Oh, oui, je parle un peu de français. He just said he speaks a little French. Charlie likes, he's, he's fascinated with French lately, so. Ah. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Chef uh, Bill, adding spinach into muffins is obviously a great way to get more greens into, you know, these little recipes and sneak them into kids' diets. Do you have any other tips for those parents watching this week? Any other veggies that you can sneak in somewhere? I think yeah, it's, you know, muffins. okay, but you can have that one and then that's it. Um, yeah, yeah, there's other things you could do. Like a, a great one is actually sweet potato into kind of mac and cheese. Like, you know, you make your mac and cheese sauce and then fold in some sweet potato and it's, you know, it's already well yam really. It's the, the orange one. Yeah. You could even do white sweet potato. Uh, if you make like a puree and then fold that in, it's a way to sneak in some vegetables there. Yeah. Um, it's we like, throw, like we go through a ton of spinach in our house with, with Charlie, especially we, we kind of, I mix it in everywhere and pastas and, and um also with the other the other go-to is frozen peas like literally have like frozen peas on hands at, at all times and throw them into anything with noodles uh i'll throw them into you know into um little burritos and things like that just to get him you know more vegetables 
but he's char honestly Charlie. We're pretty lucky. He eats a lot of vegetables. Um, he's he's pretty open to eating almost anything. Um, what would you like me to do with this? Um, you trying to give me a pop out more muffins? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave those ones in until we're done here because I think you've had enough. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, not not done yet. There's still yeah. more here to eat. All right, okay, we're really not having another muffin right now. You can you can have another one later today for your snack, okay? Sound good? Oh, it's oh, horrible. No. Hey Charlie, what's your favorite vegetable? What's your favorite like, vegetable? Charlie? Carrots or lettuce, tomatoes? What do you like? Don't say that. Don't say that. What's your favorite vegetable? Do you like carrots? What kind of carrots do you like? Maybe I could try. You like honey carrots? Yes! Honey carrots? He likes honey carrots a lot. I'll just like kind of pan roast carrots until they get almost, until they get tender, throw them in the oven, finish them off in the oven, and, and then when I take them out, I'll just glaze them with a drizzle of honey. Yeah. Then he's sold on them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Not right now. I'm going to have one in a minute. You can pop one out, but but I'm gonna have it in a minute, okay? Um, yeah. I'm trying to pop so, yeah. it out with it there. But yeah, but he's really, you know, what's your favorite food that you miss right now that we're at home all the time? What do you like to get at the farmer's market? Wow. What do you like to get? Steam bun. Yeah, there's a dim sum vendor at the farmer's market near us that he loves the steam bun, so. Oh gosh, I miss Sunday dinner. <laughs> uh, thank you, Charlie. Yes, indeed. Um, Chef Bill, is there like a recipe that you've been cooking a lot during COVID, or what's your favorite like go-to recipe right now? Um, I'm trying to think what I, we've been doing. Honestly, too many burgers, probably. Um, yep. like veggie burgers. Um, yep, too many burgers. Yeah, okay, stop doing that because you're going to ruin the muffins. You can't just jam in there. No, you okay, have it. I'm going to have it in a minute. We're talking right now. And I don't want to talk with a mouthful. Um, we've been doing uh, kind of either spaghetti or, or bucatini with like just a ton of spring vegetables right now because everything's in season. You know, all like zucchini, uh, we'll throw in peas, zucchini um asparagus and maybe some broccoli and i'll just sweat all that down in just some nice olive oil and then and then we'll just kind of add some garlic and onion and then just toss that into some noodles mm -hmm. and that is like right now that seems to be like a go-to dinner quickly a lot but it's a lot of vegetables so it's great and then we even we'll make like a sauce with um my wife is trying to avoid dairy right now just because we think our baby might be sort of slightly averse to dairy because he's, he's he's just spitting up a bunch so so uh we're making like a sauce with uh with white beans uh nutritional yeast and stock and some lemon juice so it's a really lemony almost cheese i, I love you too you can't have that right now um it's almost like a it's a another healthy way to make sort of a cheesy sauce but it's like pureed beans yeah. um, with nutritional yeast and uh lemon juice and stock and some garlic yeah, great way to add some additional fiber into the diet. Yeah, so we'll like fold that over and it just gives it a slight creaminess. We don't like drench it in that, but it's uh, it just makes like a nice little coating sauce. And, and, and then, uh, so that's been a go-to. And honestly, lately, I've been loving eating the leftover spaghetti cold, like the, the noodles basically with the vegetables and olive oil, just cold. It's really, just, we live in Oakland and it gets pretty hot here. Yeah, um, during the hot we, summer months. We just live in an old house with, with poor insulation so it's really hot in our house a lot so yeah like like cold noodles are great for me that sounds so good kind of a lot. and it looks like we're um, starting to run short on time here but i just want to ask you one last question because yeah. you know, during covid and during quarantine a lot of these restaurants and the um, hospitality industries have really been hit hard um you know what's your like top tip on how to support those local restaurants Right now, if you can order to go from them, buy gift certificates. Um, a lot of them are doing really great takeout programs. Um, some of them are doing meal kits. Uh, if you can do those types of things, um, it's it's really really helpful. Um, uh, no, you can't have another one right now. Put it down, please. Um, yeah, they've. Uh, it's it's you know everyone's been hit really really hard in the restaurant industry. Yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, just doing, you know, as much of that. Some, some restaurants are doing even sort of like CSA programs. I know La Cochina in uh, San Francisco is doing a really great kind of meal kit you can purchase every month and you can freeze a bunch of the items. Um, so it's uh, for $100, you get, I think, nine different items that feed two to three people each. So awesome. um, like such a great program too. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, the they're amazing. In the Bay Area, so. so you're supporting a bunch of their vendors in one shot by doing that, which is great. Um, yeah, there's just, there's, there's a lot. And I think just kind of any little ways you can funnel your spending dollars to, to the restaurants, I think. It, you know, it gives them hope of being able to reopen when this is done uh, in full capacity. But cool. okay, that's enough of that. Thank you, Chef Bill. Thank you, Charlie. It looks like we're out of time. I've got another uh, five minutes or so on my blueberry muffins, but uh, I can't wait for them to come out. You said blueberry, not beetberry. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. And uh, for those of you dialed online, remember to be happy, be healthy, and be well. Bye, everyone. Bye.